Hello YouTubers, I have painted a yellow rose to be correct. I have painted a dry yellow rose which looks like this and it's quite funny. Uh, do you see it on the distance? Here, and I've just been working with this thing over there. So that's the rose, and I've just been playing around with it. And um, I think it's becoming quite funny. Uh, it's hard to get it to live when it's dead, but I think I did some um, funny stuff with the with the leaves and stuff to kind of give it some personality and make it come alive and I'm pretty pleased with it so this is this is the video of the painting process so yeah that's me in a different mirror and I also made a new table for my studio of some old doors I found and that's also quite funny I found I actually had them from before. I used to have them there, but they didn't fit. So I built this table to have my friends around for dinner. Yeah, and that's gonna be fun. Now it's more room for them to spill their drinks and food I give them. Anyway, um, uh, as usual, I have to ask you to subscribe to my channel, share my videos on social media and put them into um, um, uh, yeah yeah put them into whatever uh, playlists of course yeah and um, you can also donate and become a patron if you want to do that that would be great if you can get something out of this so please do anyway have a good one and I see you in the next video Okay, tubers, I'm gonna paint this rose. It's quite funny actually. Uh, it's a dried rose, and I'm gonna use that uh, background there and the contrast, maybe a little bit bigger. But it has this <laughs> strange um, bow to his head, and almost reminds me of a human being. I'm going to do it with the same background and I'm going to paint it on this small canvas here. So, okay, here we go. And here we go. Let me see, I don't want this to be bigger than in reality, so I'm going to measure it. And actually it's quite small, it's like this. So I'll just mark here. Um, just mark there and count some short one. It's actually only one. It always looks more on this here, and the leaves are actually down here somewhere. So to get a good composition, I think I just need to place it almost actually spot on. Yeah, and it's going to be quite funny because it's there are some textures on the wall back here, so that I'm going to put in in the back, take them a little bit more down, so I get some something happening in the background also, or it can be quite dead, and we don't want it to be dead. So, see how far I come. So it's not that much battery, so I'm going to kind of draw it here, here, down there, this comes under, down like this, this goes further up, shadow under here, then this one comes out there, and this one comes out here. Mm -hmm. And there's this one, leaf, there, this leaf, so 
the one over here. As always, I will be adjusting these things. So I need to have it a little bit more this way. Um, so. Do what I will do if I use charcoal here. The wall behind are quite blue reddish compared to the orange in the flower. Um, you know, you pick a flower like this and you can find customer who really loves it because it's quite different but most people won't buy it because it doesn't really look like the cliche of a flower uh, but who cares I find it very interesting maybe I should also it's fall now so maybe I should or autumn so maybe I should pick some leaves and Maybe photograph them against that wall and do some uh, work with that as well. The problem with picking uh, leaves are that they tend to change so much if you're going to paint them live that you won't be able to finish it before they crawl up and look just totally fucked up. But I have been, I'm going to start making some charcoal stuff. I have done one short video but I didn't, because I wanted to start drawing again. I'm also going to start making prints like lithography and if I'm going to do that I need to do something with my drawing skills. Because when I draw only like this with color, I tend to be able to just paint over the mistakes I do, so I don't have to concentrate that much um, as if you do if you do uh, uh, yeah. A little of fear, you can't actually do, do a mistake, or even worse, if you do etzing or miss a tint, you can't really do any mistakes at all. So, well, you have, can't do mistakes, but it's a hell of a process to fix it again. So. Balance there, it has to be more getting more in there, a little bit more this way, but also uh, the leaf here is coming out approximately around here. And that means that this leaf will weigh up for the different in distance from here. So there. It's not much, but it can be enough to fuck up the whole composition. So think a little bit before you paint, because if not, you want to have a serious problem. Okay. Also, going to do some. Painting of some small faces, and I'm going to start doing small, shorter videos for my Patreon, Pat Patreon page. Hopefully, somebody would start supporting me on Patreon. That would be very nice. Um,
I'm also working with my onion earlier. And I was wondering what I was going to paint next. Um, because this canvas is going to this uh, exhibition, collect, collective exhibition. My home, home island, Kame, or hometown, Hogson, Kame. Um, yeah. Should I place it in the middle? Ooh, difficult to say. Let's see what happens. it over there. And so I need a little bit more. But I will adjust it as it goes along anyway, so I'm not going to be a bitch about it. You have to move it a little bit more that way. And a little bit, maybe a little bit that way. You know, if I didn't talk, I would frog concentrate more. I was wondering have a totally dark background, but what often happens then is that the whole thing becomes too hard, it doesn't become dynamic and fluent. So I decided to go for more realism. Yeah, I can actually move it now, you can see that. Move it all the way over there, maybe. This one has a drone, probably has grown for fuck's sake. Yeah, it has grown. So I just it mustn't grow. It's very important. I've already decided how big it's gonna be and it shouldn't grow. I should just take away and add on the other side when I got the composition wrong. This and we'll just keep moving it that way, and in the end, it will be how it is supposed to be. Also, maybe move it down, down 
So. You say it's wrong. Fuck. That was just because I didn't think enough. It should actually have been exactly in the middle. And the size that these leaves comes down here, but don't go out of the picture. So I just have to keep molding it down. I'm not gonna remove everything. I'm just gonna move it down because the eye of the rose now because it almost looks like a face. It has to be around here somewhere. And this one comes around here. Down. Here, this one comes all the way down here, and this one out like this. And the distance between the leaves are all the way down here, actually. See now, and it's going to come out there, and then it's going to be okay. You see, it's kind of fun to do it, actually. You do a mistake and you have to think and use your head. Kind of fun. Hmm. Uh, if you want to learn how to draw, you just have to go to Leonardo da Vinci. I can't really see how any other drawer or can uh, teach you anything. He has the most aesthetic, aesthetic uh, drawings in the world, I think. It's so beautiful and it's so dynamic and it's so subtle and uh, honest, extremely honest. So that's my recommendation. And if you want to learn to paint, you have to go to Rembrandt. And uh, Jan Vermeer. And all the other good ones, but that's the main the main best one best ones in my opinion. So, yeah. It comes a little bit messy here now, but we're starting slowly to move it, move it. Yeah, I think it's good for you to see me make a huge mistake. And that was actually not in the paint itself, it was in the composition. And I know this, if I just, ah, it's good enough, you know. Uh, I would hate this painting, really, really sincerely hate it. Just a small thing. I, I wouldn't be able to stand it. And if you get into that situation, it's also very difficult to finish it. It's almost like you should try to play Mozart on a piano out of sync. And um, that would have just made me crazy. Still a little bit out of eh, hard to tell. 
tell. Probably going to move things around in this. It's going to be cool in the end. You see now, it almost becomes a little bit, I get this religious feel to it when you get it into the middle and it becomes this. You get the same compositions that you do in the religious paintings of the world. And they were brilliant with composition. You can disagree with the subject matter. I'm an atheist, so I find religion quite obnoxious. But the paintings and the buildings are beautiful. So a homage to um, basically the symmetry and the, without knowing it, the laws of nature which create symmetry. This one is going to go down there. I think if I had just put it right in the first place, I wouldn't have this problem. <clears throat> oh. I love this, just molding the paint. Pushing it into the canvas, the dance. Usually I play music and I'm not talking to you, I'm playing music when I paint. And it can be everything from trance to Mozart and Rammstein and U2 and um, Coldplay and all kinds of music that I love. Uh, as long as it has this this human power in it, uh, as long as it sounds honest. Actually, I love Janis Joplin because she was extremely uh, honest, fantastically honest. And as a painter, that is where you have to go. Try to be as honest as possible. Uh, both in, uh, in your artwork and your life in general because honesty and honest persons uh, subjective matter in a way subjective mind will transfer into the brush strokes in a painting uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off now and uh, come back when I've done some more. Okie dokie dokie. Here we are again. So, I have, as you can see, moved it around a little bit and gotten it more into the center. Uh, it's almost almost the same, but I, I can't have it too low because then the leaves will get out of the picture and we don't want that, so it will be a catastrophe. So, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but I think it's um, starting to. I think there's a shadow over there. Uh, I'm wondering to maybe put it in here a little bit weaker, but I don't want it to disturb the main thing. So I'm just gonna mold in the leaves and uh, well, the block, as somebody called it. I don't know why they call it blocking, uh, but we just call it molding, sketching. Uh, 
my voc vocabulary in English isn't that great, so I kind of learning as I go along. Uh, and um, I've been better. I think if you go back to my earlier videos, you can actually hear that I bring in some progression in my English. I've also been coming to New York and I have a lot of English speaking friends and stuff so so uh, it gets better all the time. Anyway, um, as you can see now I almost started there because I, I didn't concentrate but it's now down here. And the background is kind of in the red, but uh, right now it's only to get it, get the drawing right. Uh, and <coughs> and I start putting in the colors later, the real colors. I could do that at the same time, probably, but I don't do that anymore. It's too fucking boring. It takes too long. Time. Oh, it doesn't take too much time. It becomes rigid. I like to be uh, be sketchy as far as I can. So, it was actually smart of me to to use a, a lighter a light background because it uh, becomes more realistic. So there's one leaf, it's a little bit smaller than a flower actually in reality. So I just make it a little bit smaller. And there's something there, like this. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit further to the right. I'm gonna do some videos soon where I want to try to make a video where you can uh, where I go from painting on the canvas to do to show you my palette. I have a small video YouTube where I talk about how to use the palette. I prefer to hold it like this. Uh, it's kind of a, like an instrument. And I also like to have the same uh, structure in the colors. I place them the, basically the same place every time. So it kind of creates a pattern, recognizable pattern for my brain. So I don't confuse my brain. I have seen other people having the colors beside them. Frankly, I don't know how they can manage to have a very dynamic painting process if they put the colors beside them like that, because there's too many, too many, you have to do this and then you put it on. I saw David, David Kassin, the cousin, has a thing beside, he just, but as a, he, is, he is a totally different painter. And he's a photorealist, so so uh, I guess he needs much more of that control. Or yeah, for me, I'm not that that photographic. More like a painter, and I also don't have his. That type of <coughs> that type of skill set that he has. I'm not a photorealist. I love to paint. I love to dig into the paint. Um, 
that way I'm more like an impressionist, I guess, and that is my temper. Uh, the photorealists might have more of a different temper than me. Um, anyway, uh, I prefer to have the colors like this. Uh, it's my instrument, so my, when I'm alone, my hands are just moving in a fast pace over it. And because then you go into the flow and everything becomes beautiful. Everything just falls into place. And I love these brushes. They give me kind of I just drag then I can. And I kinda of like this. It's gonna be, be fun because after a while I will start increasing the yellows and the light here and I will damp down the behind, which is in a totally it's a, it's a, it is complementary for colours, so uh, I just have to see it. I used to have music in the background and stuff like that when I was painting, but I got into some copyright issues and I turned off the sound of some of my videos and, and it's a real sad thing that you can't actually... I mean, one thing is to, to copy it for, for a good copy of music that you without us yourself, but I mean it would be so nice to have if there was a law that said if you just play it in the background, it's not good quality sound, it can't be used on a dance floor or whatever, that you could actually use it like, indirectly. But sadly you can't. And uh, your videos can be blocked, they can be demonetized, they can be silenced, and it's a sad thing because playing music while, while I'm painting is, is so great. Um, I have a video where I, where I talk about that, the flow of painting. And how the music affects me and brings me into this fantastic state of mind. It makes me so happy. It feels like I'm beaming. In that state, uh, if somebody asked me if I want to just... Well, anyway, if somebody asked me if I want to live forever, I would probably say yes. Because I would also know that in eternity or, or infinity, something will probably change it anyway. So, well, anyway, I, 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 on a good day when I paint and when I feel at one with myself, it is really sad to think that my life will end, at least within the next 50 years. If, if not, science are doing some great breakthroughs. Uh, and that my skills and my eyes and 
my body will start deteriorating as I get more and more skill actually and more and more get smarter in a way and get deeper and then we die it's so fucked up it was. so when you reach that level of of flow you paint it's a place I can stay forever I think I think that must be why the Buddhists are talking about Nirvana or using meditation because they are meditating themselves into that that state where you you stop thinking you are aware but not aware at the same time and I guess many of you as painters has noted this and if you can fall in love with that feeling everything else becomes boring actually when I see a bad TV series a bad movie or something after I've been painting or just to try to relax I just feel horrible after it I feel empty but if I just do some stretching and yoga or and have some good food read, write in my diary before I go to bed I really feel so great and I would recommend people to stay away from bad entertainment and just try to find that flow every day and you will just flow into infinity and, uh, yeah. I ah, wish we could live in definitely to get my I have so many paintings I want to do before I'm gone. So well I just have to use the time I have. the best I can. Mm. You see now I have uh, kind of starting to make a sketch and I'm just going to turn off the camera a little for, uh, for an hour, or half an hour, an hour, maybe two hours and uh, one hour I should do it. Mold it a little bit more and Come back to you. Okay. So that's the finished sketch. Uh, I can't put on any more color now. So just have to wait for the next layer. Okay, dokie, dokie. <coughs> so layer number two. First, I put my my Retuschefanis on this one Old Home Retuschefanis that gives me some more room I can see the colors better I must have said this a billion times in all my other videos but I can keep repeating myself because I guess not everybody sees the videos and now I will after this I will take a lasure with uh, some uh, alzarine, traplac and French ultramarine and just stroke over it so I get the textures to come out uh, so I have something to work with I often <coughs> let the color of the panis dry before I do that. But I actually also think it's okay to let uh, uh, oil and uh, 
the color and the fannies kind of mix together. Sometimes I like this, sometimes I like that. So this is what I do. I just go over it like this. <clears throat> now it was actually going to be more reddish on that side, bluish on this side. So um, I did a little mistake there. You can actually <clears throat> That's why all the colors, and the, well, the whites on the leaves kind of shining through it um, gives it a uh, keeps the colors clean clear and it kind of lightens up a little bit actually I'm going to use some because it's very red on that side I'm going to use some uh, vermilion and blue so I get more so now you see the difference between the colors yeah and maybe we can also use some cobalt blue because on the other one side it's very it's actually quite um, uh, cold. The colors are cold. So, so I'm not, I am going to paint over all this. So it's not really. It's just a way to. I think it's easier to do it like this because I kind of mix in the different colors. I can see the. Uh, the contrasts better and I kind of get into the painting flow faster by doing it. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with. So what I also do now is that I, yeah, I keep this as kind of, it's old, very old, a lot of, but I keep this over my arm, and I have, um, this over that again, because you don't want the oil to, the paint to go into your skin. Just take away a bunch of oil because I want it to stay dry, and then I start as usual with the light parts because it makes it it makes me go right into it like. It's, in a way, I start. I always start with the uh, light, light the, the brightest parts, and things that. So when I then put this on, it just lightens up. Uh, this is uh, this rose is a uh, dried rose, so it's very very dead, very dry has had it around for a long time so it has lost all the, all the feeling of being alive it's quite, even the colors has have been fainting fading, not fainting <laughs> fading uh, so it isn't much color to work with the small like nuances and it's very orange and yellow so it becomes very warm yellowish but I like it and the shape of it is also quite funny because it kind of hangs with it head with its head 
So it all feels like a like it is alive in a way. See now I just start building the light again. And every time I do that I build more and more like clay sculpture like here. It becomes almost like a sculpture. So the difference in in uh, texture and um, the level on the surface that the painter also will in the end create some physical relief space um, that also enhances uh, the sense of light and darkness See now. Actually, I got something into my eye today, so I can't really see well with one of my eyes. But <clears throat> I guess I have. It's it's enough with. I can see enough. It's quite annoying actually, but I see enough to able to paint. I've noticed that the problem now is that I, I'm coming a little bit long-sided so I can see clearly over there but here it's like hmm. so it's quite annoying getting old. Cadmium yellow, cadmium lemon yellow. I also have a cadmium orange. Not that it's needed because I could actually mix those colors from the other ones. But instead of stressing with that, it's easier for me to have different colors like like three yellows and four actually. Um, or maybe you should, yeah, that's an all very orange. And I have, um, I have um, cadmium red, the Amelio, and, um, and the Alessaline, which I love, or Kaplak, as it's called. Um, also called. And I have um, tree blue. Prussian blue, it's very important, it's cold, and I use the um, uh, ultramarine, dark, darkest one, ultramarine, it's deep, deep blue, and then I also use the cobalt. So it's very clean colors. As a when I started painting, I had this idea only using three colors, red, yellow, and the primary colors. And it worked, actually, too. So, maybe I should try again, go back. But then I had to mix every neons. And I think it's kind of limited to how many as I could mix, but well, I made paintings of it. So. Anyway, to get that real, get really down to darkness, I think the into the realm of the black. I think um, if you mix kind of cotton, cadmium orange, and. Um, and the Alzarine or Kaplak and Ultramarine, you get quite deep, like I do here now. It becomes quite deep, 
deep or any short. It depends. Depends if you put more blue in, it becomes more to the blue. If you put in more of the coming orange, uh, it becomes a little bit more to the green. And you can keep on manipulating it back and forth in that way. And it's uh, uh, you just have to sit down and concentrate and learn from your mistakes because it's it's very hard to to. Um, It's like you can't, you, of course, if you learn notes and stuff like that, which I'm doing now, teaching you which colors to use, you have to practice. You can't understand these things until you do all the mistakes. And learning from a mistake demands that you paint a lot and that, that you are honest and that you try to push yourself further and further you know and I also mix on the canvas itself and there's a rule of thumb, you don't mix more than three color, colors together. If you mix like red, yellow and different colors and with the black or with the, with the white, they tend to become kind of mushy. It kind of dies, it doesn't have any life. Because that is not how lights is or the rainbow is created. It is created by yeah by photons of course but it's created with um, the colors aren't really mixed they are more put together in a way to give an impression. That's why we call them impressionists because you understood that you just put all the colors side by side and in the end you get these beautiful optic illusions of living light yeah um, see now I kind of go into it holding it it's so funny, I remember when I was a young when I was younger and I was, in the beginning the two, three, four, four the first years, five maybe, it was only testing and failing. I could never really I didn't manage to go from the sketch. I could do quite good sketches, but I couldn't go from the sketch to a good painting because the skill wasn't there. And yeah. So when you do painting and you keep on doing it, you just keep getting better. And that's a good thing, I think. Let me see. Okay. That's a difficult uh, leaves on extremely dead and dry so I have to go in with that green that mimics dryness <laughs> it's not going to be that realistic anyway it's going to be more like a impression of it. Yeah, I don't know. See what happens. Trying to figure out the texture. Yeah. And you can also go in and make some contrasts like 
peace. So then it kind of starts to live. No? Uh, study the drawings of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. See how he has been studying nature. How uh, he uh, putting using the, the contrast and put them up against each other. How he forms some some of the things just from his head playing with the shapes and yeah it doesn't really have to be a hundred percent just have to be aesthetic and this comes out from behind and I can also start doing something with the uh, the background, you see there will be more light on this side, darker on this side to push it. So I always, even here, I start with the lightest part, the background. And if you see here, it's going to be quite flat, but here I build out, so get that sculptural effect, which I love really love I'm in love with paint I would say so see here and it comes more boom 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 yeah Funny, people have asked me if I do courses, but I always say no. Then I give it away for free to you. So, I don't know, I just enjoy teaching people. But I don't have time to do courses. Um, maybe when I get older. Wiser, um, calmer, maybe. I have actually had some students that I have given a kick in the butt in a way to get going with it. But many times it's like they can't get over that hurdle and they lose the spirit, not spirit, they can't really go the last mile, which is the most important. Uh, see now it's too much I'm talking too much anyway I need to focus so I need to turn off this this camera and I will film some more in a couple of hours and you can see how it went You see, I'm, I'm always working in directions, in different, and then I start, when I get more into it, I start using smaller pencils and, you know, shaping it. It's just keep shaping, keep adding, keep adding, and extracting, adding and extracting. Yay! Okay, two hours later. <clears throat> I've just been building around, just giving everything some more punch. Uh, it is getting tired.
tired now. Uh, it's like nine in the morning, and it's ridiculous because I seem to always <coughs> push shit. So I don't see much lights actually during the winter time. Not even during the summer time. Because I work at night and into the mornings and I finally get going, it's like I can't stop and just keep going. Hmm. Yeah, some green in the shadow because it's reddish here, so it's in green. So I just drag it like this. I'm gonna paint over it again anyway. Put in a at least a little red and then it's red in here. So I'll put some red into the color here to light it up a little bit. It's a um, cement wall or concrete wall with some uh, old paint and texture. So there's a lot of kind of things happening in it behind it. Anyway, and after a while, I start to can give it's like if you see as I've been saying also many times the night watch of Rembrandt how the how the dresses is um, painted it is unbelievable <coughs> shadow that hits the cloth and around in the light areas it's kind of thicker paint but also give it the sculptural sculptural thing <laughs> Jesus I'm getting tired but oh, Jesus I'm an atheist so I don't believe in that shit uh, anyway give it a little bit texture something to work with next time and you can actually I don't need to do texture in the back uh, exactly as it is but I start to choose different parts that will make the surface more dynamic but it might also it mustn't be too the main focus is this one, so it mustn't be too um, uh, messy or make too much noise. Just have to be in the background in the end. And, uh, yeah. I put in some warm shadow in the mouth of it. A little bit more under the heat here. Things that also can be good in the end is to use some some cars that are clean and you give them a heightened, more clean color inside the shadow because then it kind of lightens up the whole thing, makes it more alive. Anyway, I have more layers to put on until it's finished anyway, and I've been putting on a lot of color tonight, so I can actually <coughs> just dry now. Drag this a little bit that way because it's how it is. And I put in some thick layer in the light area here. Mm -hmm. And when I 
dries, and it's dry. I come back and I paint more. I have a friend who is a eye specialist, I think I'm gonna check up my eyes. Because it is quite difficult to paint when you start seeing things more blurry. And my eyes are my tools. Maybe I should get an insurance. <clears throat> Insure my eyes. it is kind of alive so I will let it dry and then go back to just give this one a little bit of I also want to drag it into the leaf see I used the a color that is wet, so I'm painting wet and wet. And Oh, it's always so hard to tear myself away from it when I have first gotten into it. So, continue. Yeah. Anyway, now it's more dynamic. Just leave it at this, at that, or this, or whatever. Okay, till next time. So, there. Okay, another layer. Valleys again, lighten it up a little bit. Now I'm going to be more careful with the layers. I'm going to um, get more shadows and get more details into it. So now you can see how it shines up. before I uh, keep going. Um, so 
I don't, I'm not going to put on as much as the last time because that isn't really necessary. I'm going to put on some red here to lighten it up a little bit to see how it now mixes with the texture. And I take some blue and I can go in and I can make the surface a little bit more alive. I can also go into the shadows, lighten them up a little bit. And um, on this side is more bluish. Now you see that the background is kind of sh shining through the color, so it becomes um, more lively and I get some, yeah, okay. it's kind of a easy way to get the surface to start living. See that was too much because I didn't concentrate. So just do like that and take it away. But then it falls into the cracks anyway. So <clears throat> that's the whole point actually. That's a lot of watermelon. Uh, it's a little bit darker in there. If you tone down the background, the complementary colors starts to come alive more. Now you see how the surface here, contra the surface behind here, which is flatter, now it starts to become a uh, more like a relief in sculpture. So, yeah. Okay, and then I start painting. As always, I start with the light again. To get that I'm going to use a smaller pencil now. Um, get more in this place. Kind of to pinpoint it. Because you don't want to. And that's the thing the closer you get to the finished product, the smaller the pencils. Even when it comes to the big paintings, it's the same thing. Um, and that's what, what takes so much time. Smaller paintings is a different thing. It's harder to... You can't really fool anyone. You have to be very good at... Uh, good at seeing the detail and getting the detail right. Um, it's a different process. I, I have been making a small painting just now, and the face is like more, more than three centimeters big. And in the end, I just stood with this very thin pencil, extremely thin, and just small. And I'm going to make a video when I do that actually make a small figure painting so you can actually see the the process so 
So now I mix hair is green, so I just take some yellow and I come in on top of it and then I get more get more dynamic because now then it starts to come alive more. And uh, yeah. Here's some red or bright red inside the shadows here to kind of lighten them up, up a little bit because this, the light is actually shining through the leaves whatever you call it there and um, creates this warm warmth under in the shadow and there's one there so fascinating that you start out and, and up to a certain age if you don't train with figurative painting you will be like the drawings in caves actually the caveman didn't go further than that and uh, when we used to live in caves. And then the rest is actually, in a way, driven by higher culture and science, I guess. It's kind of, you know, the, the higher culture you have, the more sophisticated the paintings became. Because it used to be a science, so all the painters and drawers used to be scientists. Some of them, no, any of them, anyway. So, um, where Rembrandt though? He was a painting scientist. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, was that? But then, when you're a kid, you keep drawing, you think it's fun, then you come into puberty, and suddenly you have totally different priorities, which in my case were of course girls training and working as a welder. So I went to school and it's only quite, and I when I started drawing again when I was like 20, 21, 20 to 21. I really couldn't draw at all. I draw like uh, I did when I was 10. And it's so funny because I actually thought I was very good. That was how naive I was. I didn't have the inner voice that told me to well, I couldn't see, I, I guess I couldn't see. And uh, the naivety was so great that I couldn't see beyond the level I, I was on. So Maybe that was a good thing because it would be hard for me to become a better painter if I actually saw how horrible it was. Upstairs, if you heard that sound. Uh, and then I just went to a drawing school. I wanted to be a commercial drawer, illustrator. I don't know why, but it was a girl who got me to start drawing. And, uh, I fell in love with it and went into that, that thing. Went to drawing school, had a, met a very nice woman called Sissy. 
who taught me to love color and paint. So, from there to art school. Nobody actually taught me how to paint. That was a, that was something I did myself by uh, mistakes and trial and error. And that is also how I do it now. Because, to be honest, I don't really know how I paint, how I actually do it. It's just, I start and it evolves. I have this rule with a light and I start with a, every time I start, I start with the important parts and then I just keep going. If you look at the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci, he has this beautiful, uh, he has played with the shapes and uh, so he maybe sharpens things, add things, and you can see it that he has just kept on playing with it and that is what makes it so subjective and so poetic what he has been doing um, and you can actually feel it in the in the works of um, Rachmaninoff too when you hear the piano concerts that he's playing with your mind and he's playing with the with the textures and the music and uh, the notes and he adds his own personality to it and when you have been painting for a few years, you actually start to see it and you start also start to do it yourself. I actually noticed I did it in my own works and then I start noticing it in other people's works. Uh, but it cannot probably also go the other way, but then you have to be very conscious about what you are doing. So now I just put in these, these funny extra, I don't know what to call it in English. But I try to create some dynamics. If it, if it becomes too much, it also can kill it, so you should be careful. You have to choose a advisor choose wisely so yeah I love the silence when I'm alone. I have to film. I go into maybe I have music on, but if I go into the silence and my head goes just totally still, such a nice feeling. Now you get the point, I guess. Um, I have. Probably have some ADHD thing. I don't see it as a problem. But if you're gonna function in an ordinary job, it can actually be a problem. When I was a welder, it wasn't a problem because I I just put all my energy into my work uh, as a welder. But if you're gonna Being, uh, have work which is more personal where you have to interact with other people it can be a problem so for that warrior gene personality it's better to become an artist I think 
and you are your own master, hopefully, if you do your job. And you can kind of tell people to go fuck himself. If you want to. So painting is kind of making this quite hyper brain silent. This meditation and it makes me feel happy. The more I paint, the happier I am. Yeah, so I'll film more like 20 minutes or 70 minutes. Jesus, time flows when I'm talking. Huh? Mm. <clears throat> so been working for a while and uh, I think it might something happened to it. I will go in for a last layer or maybe two layers more. It depends how the next one goes. I've been building some textures around, some in the flower, and just kind of taking it quite slow. See and think more than I paint. Because it also always is a knife's edge when you come to this point, what is too much, what is too little. Kind of funny because it seems like the leaves and are bowing. Some, I guess, too messy. I like to do it that way when I need details. That is why it's also usually smart to start on this side and work that way. But I went in here and put on a lot of textures, so now I'm getting dirtied up, but 
so first then I can fix it so it's okay yeah And it's that thing with the white, you go too far and you lose light instead of actually adding light. So be careful with too much white because it can actually kill the feeling that the light is coming actually out of the picture. And in this one, it is a little bit more difficult because the background is so isn't dark, uh, so I can't use the ordinary effect to the amount that I usually can. So it goes more like nuances. I'm just giving it some more textures. So it seems a little bit more alive. That is why you overpaint. Take the textures from the last layer into the next layer. So, and I'm going to put on a, what I call a strategic uh, brush stroke. And I just put one on there and I drag it down a little bit and I leave the brush strokes open. So create some kind of maybe it was a little bit wrong color. Slowly do like this. Then it creates some kind of extra dynamic, and you can go in and kind of give it a little bit of a touch up there, cut into it. Work with the backgrounds also because they give life to the canvas. So I'm gonna leave it now. Just gonna put on some green. more light in this leaf. It's logical because the light is down here. Strategic. I don't know why I see or how I actually see where to put the brush strokes when I come to this point, but I think it's more like an intuition where sometimes you do it wrong I and mean, it kills everything. But I would put it around here so I get more out of. That leaf, I give it some, give it a bang. 
and I'll leave it down here because I also put on and I also give it a more reddish color so it is a nice uh, complementary contrast to to the leaf which is green greenish so see there I've got more volume maybe it's too much but then again I let it dry and then I go back in and put it back and put it into its place, rightful place. Right, but I'll fix it. to uh, wash my pencils are green soap, natural soap, and it works better than anything else. So, and you can also put some soap into them uh, when you when you put them away, so the small amount of color that is in the pencils doesn't dry. Okay, see ya. Oh, some color there. <laughs> Okay, last layer. The last layer, yes. Uh, I'm not going to put on some more, so much fannies now because it's not necessary. Actually, for some reason. Uh, it just needs some color, oil. This will be smaller detail. And uh, just touch up. With a tiny pencil. Start with that. I will go in and enhance some of the Maybe I should actually put on some if it's dry. No, it's okay. I'll be okay. Uh, I need to draw some of the shapes in there. Just a little bit of drawing because just get this this right inside here yeah um, as I say I'm just gonna do some touch up um, actually the other card was full so I had to change the card uh, what I do then is just to go in here and um, with some thin layers and a hand stuff like I just did drawing some detail uh, to get it to become more dynamic uh, because as I say it's a dry very dry rose and doesn't really have on a distance anyway 
get closer and actually it's more to see what well, Anyway, what I do is to get the things that glide more, become softer, soften it out a little bit, so so still painted but not only painted. Get the background and the foreground to melt a little bit more together how's the light I am looking at it from a, quite a distance, so it might would have been more detailed if I went closer to it. But then again, why? It's very, this kind of work is always testing one's patience. It's a difficult part because it's, it is um, where a skill, you're meeting that skill wall, how much you are able to do, how, how, how good you are, how much you are able to see. And you also sometimes start to realize mistakes you have done without actually seeing it before. So, yeah, stuff like that. Exactly down there. Uh, it kind of disappears, and that's difficult. First, I kind of do darker, then I go in with a reddish, and I go in with orange to kind of smooth it down a little bit. Up there of light. It's quite intense. We need a different. Oh, there it is. I need this kind of pencil for. <clears throat>
be keep tuning for a few hours and I will show you the result when I get them. That's how I will keep painting, looking, and making it more and more fluid. Yeah. So, I uh, feel more better. Very small touch up. Uh, now, see how I've been working. Became a little bit too much yellow behind there. I built a little bit, so I have to give it a little, take away some. Because it, it'll kind of lost its, its depth. <clears throat> I think I have to think about the redshift that the things that are in the distance in a way are warmer or even colder, can be colder than uh, the foreground. Boom, more sprue. So, so, mark this a little bit. There's a little thing sticking up behind here. I gave it a little bang. Just for fun, make that even longer so it kind of <laughs> seems a little bit more alive. That's the fun thing, you can actually keep doing stuff like that <laughs> and it starts to <laughs> become surrealism. some blue. Maybe that works. You see, I fucked up. Now it's fucked up. Jesus. Just because of that. Shit. So, take it away. Okay, that was actually better because now it just gets kind of dragged into the background. So, Maybe it was a good thing. Anyway, um, yeah. So it's a 
balance between too much and too little. See, now it starts to shine. There. And there. And I'm going to give it a little... Okay. I think this should be okay. Gonna go any further with it? So, yeah. Nobody knows what that is. Not even me, because it's not really there. But I'm putting it in anyway because it created some personality in it. It's funny because I can see myself uh, when I was a child I used to paint or draw things that were quite bizarre actually. Uh, a little bit different. I had more fantasy and I kind of can see that in, the, in my works too, that it's still there, despite that I'm a figurative painter. That child is still alive in a small, intuitive things I do, that is not really in the painting, it's just things I put in that coincidences because that is what it's all about actually the, the motif is kind of the thing I try to reach uh, but at the same time I'm trying to reach something within myself and my intu intuition so yeah Just one more, and I'm done. There. Ah. Good show. Lie it up a little bit. That's the problem. You start doing this shit, you never know when to stop. And that's how the hours pass. You're just gonna do a little bit more. And eight hours later, you are throwing the pallet into the wall. Because you have fucked it up. So, okay, leave it. There's a voice in my head 